Hello and welcome to Love from the Other Side. If you are on this video, perhaps you too are in need of hope. And that's what we hope to bring you with these stories from people around the world who have shared their near-death experiences. While you may not agree with everything that they share, we ask that all comments be kept respectful and kind. With that being said, let's get started with today's video. Today we bring you one of the most fascinating accounts of near-death experiences. This is the account of Melon Thomas Benedict. He passed away for the final time on March 31st, 2017. But prior to that, there was 1982. Mellon was a true Renaissance man, an artist, musician, and inventor. Mellon was known worldwide as a luminary being, a scientist, a visionary, a speaker, a spiritual healer, inventor, workshop leader, and author of countless articles on near-death experiences. In 1982, Mellon Thomas Benedict was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. Shortly after, he experienced death and, miraculously, he lived to tell about it. While on the other side, Benedict journeyed through various afterlife realms and was given access to universal intelligence, by which he was allowed to absorb tremendous amounts of spiritual and scientific knowledge. Hopping right into his experience, let's start here. I fell into what I can only describe as hell, and what a fall it was. It was as if I was sinking into a suffocating black hole, and it was my personal hell. But there were millions of others all around me in their own hells suffering and grieving in every way imaginable. My pain and fear was amplified millions of times. I cannot and do not want to describe this any further than to say it was each individual's version of eternal misery. It seemed like I was in hell for eternity, when somehow I noticed that I could still see that speck of light way off in the distance. I also saw that every other hell around me had a speck of light, but no one was paying attention to it. We were all so consumed with our own fear, grief, loss, hopelessness, anger, and on and on. There seemed to be no bottom or end to this pain. I felt cut off from it and yet somehow intimately connected to all the suffering around me. Feeling cut off by my own pain was the darkest part of this hell for me, and yet all around me were millions of others, each caught up in their own private hell. In the midst of all my suffering, I remember that the light became brighter when I called to it. I cried out with all of my soul, please help me, please help me. I now began to focus less on my pain and more on the light. The more I summoned my will to focus on the light, the brighter and more intense it became. It occurred to me that if there was any way out of this place, it was the light. I focused all of my energy, and that was no easy task, and called out to the light with every atom of my being, all without words, just emotion and energy. Suddenly, everything stopped. There was a great silence in hell, mine and all the others. The intensity of the light continued to grow until I felt spears of light shooting through me, piercing my heart, hands, and feet, then my head and my eyes, giving me strength. Then, out of the light, a golden beam shaped like a halo came towards me. As it moved closer, I could see it was a towering golden angel. I had always believed angels to exist only in fairy tales, but there before me was the most beautiful angel, I felt so much love emulating from this being. I saw its golden face, powerful wings, and shimmering skirt. I didn't know what to do, so I asked, Are you the angel of death? There is no death. There is only eternal life, the angel answered. Who are you then? Can you save me? I begged. I am your guardian angel, your higher self, your oversoul, the angel answered. I have been with you all of your life. Upon hearing these words, I became aware of another part of myself, a larger, higher part that I had only glimpsed as a child and in rare dreams throughout my life. 
I had not understood that this was the larger part of me, the oversoul or the source of inspiration, my connection to the light. I cried, where am I? Am I in hell? Can you save me from this suffering or must I stay here forever? What did I do to deserve this hell? Then I was enveloped in the angel's shimmering golden skirt. From inside it, it seemed to be transparent. Look again at your life, the angel said. I began to slowly spiral inside the angel's skirt, seeing again my life's demons, the shadows, the cold, sticky fire clawing at the skirt all around me. This time, however, I was protected in the skirt of the angel, and I could see the shadows without fear. The angel explained to me that I was trapped in my negative life issues, that they had consumed me, not just here, but all during my life as well. Then I realized that hell is a state of consciousness, very real and existing both in life and in what we call death. But consciousness survives death, and the individual takes their issues, positive and negative, with them to the other side. So below, so above, and so above, so below, the angel said, and then said, no soul was ever created to suffer. So why have I suffered, I asked. Ignorance and fear, fear of survival, the angel answered. Look, I was shown more aspects of my life in exquisite detail. I realized how ignorant I had been because I did not know how the pieces of life created a tapestry that can be woven, unwoven, and rewoven by everything that we do. How every thread has a reason and a purpose. I had come to this world full of fear and anger. I saw my biological father's life and experienced his rage, allowing me to understand why he was the way he was. I could see my mother's fear of survival in her adopted mother's hands and later in my father's hands. This was her program or life pattern. I also experienced my brother's life, to whom I had transferred a great deal of fear and anger, as it had been transferred to me from my parents. I could see why my grandmother had been so cruel to my mother and why my grandparents on both sides of the family had never felt close to their grandchildren, and so on and so on. Every little aspect was playing out. I could see and feel how fear and ignorance dominate so many lives. Please, I've seen enough. Don't make me watch this forever, I pleaded. For the first time, I could begin to see why I was the person I had become. Can I leave this place? I don't want to be here anymore, I asked. Suddenly, everything stopped, and there arose a profound silence, except for an ever-so-slight hiss all around me. I waited, it seemed forever, for an answer. This is your life, the angel whispered into my right ear. What do you really want? I want to leave here, please, I replied. Then let go of your negative life issues. What do you mean? How do I do it? I'll do anything, I said. Listen to me now. You have the power. You have always had the power to be free, awaiting inside of you. But how, I asked. Forgive all your life issues. Forgive everyone and everything in your life. Fear is only hell said the angel. Love your life, everyone and everything, and fear no more. At that very moment, I came face to face with my life, and trusting in my life as never before. I said and meant, I love my life, all of it. I surrendered, and what an incredible release that was. Loving my life freed me from my hell. I felt free and light, the first inklings of a love light of being loved like never before. The time has come for you. You can leave. You always could, the angel said. Now reach to me and come. I reached out emotionally for the angel. I could see millions of souls trapped in their private hells. Most of them were totally consumed by the traumas they had suffered or created in their lives. A few, from what I could see, seemed to be actually enjoying hell. Some others seemed to be bored with the whole thing, but millions of souls were begging to be saved. I asked why these souls were unable to be free. They are already free, answered the angel. 
They hold themselves to negative patterns, memories, prejudices, and fear. None of these negative qualities exist where you desire to be. I was protected by the angel and we moved at light speed through the realm of hell consciousness. I shouted to the others, call to the light, call to the light. You can leave this place at any time. Come on, let's leave hell together. I kept yelling, call to the light, call to the light. You can leave, you can leave. And you know, many did call to the light. Many souls did leave hell together, sort of a group of exodus. I can tell you the whole thing caused quite a ruckus in hell that day. I would meet some of these souls later after my return to life. We recognized each other every time. I sailed with the angel out of hell and through several other realms, like varying degrees of light and dark, finally leaving the darkness behind. As the light revealed itself to me, I became aware that I was really seeing our higher self matrix. The only thing I can tell you is that it turned into a matrix, a Mandela of human souls. What I saw was what we call our higher self, and each of us is a matrix. It's also a conduit to the source. Each one of us comes directly as a direct experience from the source. We all have a higher self or an oversoul part of our being. It revealed itself to me in the truest energy form. The only way I can really describe it is that the being of higher self is more like a conduit. It did not look like that but it is a direct connection to the source that each and every one of us has. We are directly connected to the source. So the light was showing me the higher self matrix, and it became very clear to me that all the higher selves are connected as one human being, and all human beings are connected as one being. We are all actually the same being, different aspects of the same being. I was not committed to one particular religion, so that is what was being fed back to me. And I saw this Mandela of human souls. It was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. I just went into it, and it was just overwhelming. It was like all the love you ever wanted, and it was the kind of love that cures, heals, and regenerates. As I asked the light to keep explaining, I understood what the higher self matrix is. We have a grid around the planet where all the higher selves are connected. It's like this great company, the next subtle level of energy all around us, the spirit level, you might say. Then after a couple of minutes, I asked for more clarification. I really wanted to know what the universe is about, and I was ready to go at that time. I said, I am ready, take me. I had come to a negative view of what has happened on the planet, so I asked the light to keep clarifying for me. The light seemed to breathe in me even more deeply. It was as if the light was completely absorbing me. The love light is, to this day, indescribable. As I entered another realm, the more profound than the last, I became aware of something more, much more. It was an enormous stream of light, vast and full, deep in the heart of life. I asked what it was. The light responded, This is the river of life. Drink of this manna water to your heart's content. So I did. I took one big drink and then another. To drink of life itself. It was ecstasy. Then the light said, You have a desire. The light knew all about me, everything past, present, and future. Yes, I whispered. I asked if I could see the rest of the universe beyond our solar system, beyond all human illusion, and the light told me that I could go with the stream. I did, and I was carried through the light at the end of the tunnel. I felt and heard a series of very soft sonic booms. What a rush. Suddenly, I seemed to be rocketing away from the planet of the stream of life. I saw the earth fly away. The solar system in all its splendor whizzed by and disappeared. At faster than light speed, I flew through the center of the galaxy, absorbing more knowledge as I went. I learned that this galaxy and all of the universe is bursting with many different varieties of life. I saw many worlds. The good news is that we are not alone in this universe. As I rode through the stream of consciousness through the center of the galaxy, the stream was expanding in awesome waves of energy. 
The super cluster of galaxies with all their ancient wisdom flew by. At first I thought I was going somewhere, actually traveling, but then I realized that as the stream was expanding, my own consciousness was also expanding to take everything in the universe. All creation passed by me. It was an unimaginable wonder. I truly wondered as a child, a babe in wonderland. It seemed as if all the creations in the universe soared by me and vanished in the speck of light. Almost immediately, a second light appeared. This light came from all sides. It was so different. A light made up of more than every frequency in the universe. We are stopping at this point today. Thank you for listening. We are going to come back with a part two of this video where he enters a second light. He explains the awareness that came as he passed into that second light. And then we will go over his return to earth. Thank you for spending your time with us today. I hope that you have enjoyed this thus far. Be sure to hit that bell icon and that will let you know when we upload the next video in this series. Until next time, God bless.